Hello and welcome to the SRE Rapid Health Needs Assessment Solution. This solution has three complete semi-automatic workflows for the planning, field work, and analysis part of the CASPER method. As you know, CASPER is a methodology used by health agencies in order to determine the health status of a community before, during, and after an emergency. So let's just start with the planning process. The first step is to define a point of reference so we can get information related to the census blocks we need to do the analysis. We just need to save this point of reference and then use it as the input that we need, point of reference, to get census block information. In this case, we are getting information for LA County. Notice that every step has user's instructions. This will let any member of your team perform this process. As a result, we get this specific layer that contains the census block information for the whole county. Now, if we want to reduce the area of interest, we can select the AOI layer and draw a new area of interest, area of study, or we can select a layer that we have that contains our new area of interest. In this case, for example, we will use the boundaries of North Ridge City. So let's go ahead and continue with the process. We'll select our LA layer that contains the census block information, our new area of interest, in this case, North Ridge, and our output layer. Put here North Ridge block. Now, there is an important option here. After getting feedback from some health professionals, we conclude that for statistical purposes, it is important to preserve the integrity of every census block when a spatial operation is applied. To ensure that, by default, the tool won't clip any of the elements of the layer, and also will only include all those census blocks whose centroids are contained in the area of interest. So we we'll run this tool, and as a result, we will get our new layer. Now, the final step before being ready for my final analysis is to choose what will be the variable that we will use for the pseudo-random selection. For this, I have the option of using the 2010 housing units information that it's included in the base layer, or I can use the geo enrichment process so I can get the 2018 total housing unit projection created by ESRI. For this specific example, we will use the 2018 projection. So we will select our new block. An output layer, and then we just need to run the tool. While this is running, I would like to make it clear. This variable, the variable that we are getting, will be used for the theory block selection. This is a pseudo random selection. In this case, the more housing units a block have, the greater the greater are its chances of being chosen. So it is meaningful that we get the most current information for this process. So as you can see, we get the result layer. Now it's time to make the random selection. So let's go ahead to the next step and then choose the new layer, enrich. <clears throat> We select the unit 
that we will use for the random selection. In this case, the 2018 total housing unit projection. We have to enter here theory cluster. By regulation, the method, the Casper method, needs to have theory cluster clusters and then define that it's seven housing units per cluster. We define a new result here, a new result layer, um, selected clusters. And we run this test. It is really meaningful to mention that before this tool, normally users use uh, Excel spreadsheet and a random generator. And then manually, they choose each of these clusters. So this tool basically is saving hours of work for our users. So there we go. So you can see how now they have the theory cluster selected. Uh, if you pay attention to the table, there are just 26 uh, rows. And this is because being a random selection, some of them are selected more than one time. That means that they have to convey, conduct 14 surveys in that specific cluster. This is because this specific cluster has um, a lot of housing units, giving it a lot of chances to be selected more than one. Also, the tool generate a random housing unit number so the teams in the field will be able to uh, easily select what will be the housing unit that will be selected as a starting point. All right, so it seems that we are ready to go to the final step and publish this layer to RGIS Online so our people in the field can start with a collection of information. Thank you very much.